What's up everyone? My name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer at Cash App, and today I'm going to show you how to design bottom sheets in Figma in accordance with Google's material design guidelines. If you're not familiar with material design, I recommend going to their site where you can read documentation about different components, as well as test out live demos to see how things work in production. Bottom sheets are used to show supplementary content on a mobile device. There are three different types of bottom sheets, standard, modal, and expanding. A standard bottom sheet will show supplementary content without interfering with the primary content on the screen. A modal bottom sheet will provide an inline menu or dialogue that people can interact with, but they'll need to dismiss it in order to interact with the underlying content. Expanding bottom sheets will provide a preview of information that could be expanded to access a key feature or task. The anatomy of a bottom sheet is relatively simple. There's the sheet itself, the contents of the sheet, and then a scrim, which is only going to be used in modal bottom sheets. A bottom sheet can have anything from a list of menu items to information about a location in a map application to an expandable music player that can show a list of songs in an album. To start things off, let's create a standard bottom sheet like we have in this music app here. The first thing I'm going to do is create a frame. We'll call this Android Small, and then I'm going to make another frame, and we're going to set this to be the full width of the screen, which is 360 pixels. Let's make it 56 pixels high. We're going to bottom align this and then center it. And then so it's more viewable, we're going to add a fill here. We're going to make it that primary color. You're not going to have these color styles in your Figma file by default, but if you click on the link in the description, you'll be able to download the file and follow along. Next thing we're going to do is show the indicator of where you're at in the song that you're listening to. Let's make a rectangle. We'll make this 360 pixels wide, four pixels high, and then we'll change this fill to be that primary. But then we're actually going to detach this and make it a little bit darker. So there's some contrast from this item down below. Let's remove any spacing here, set that to zero. Then we gotta move this down 31 pixels so it aligns with the bottom. Then I'm gonna duplicate this rectangle again, change the width to 104. And then I'm gonna set this to be that light primary. And so now if we zoom in a little bit, you can see we've got the bottom bar and then we've got the songs progress indicator here. I'm gonna go into this bottom bar. I'm going to create a square. And we're gonna make this 56 by 56 pixels. And then I'm going to center and left align that. I'm going to grab some album artwork. I'll put that in here. And then I'm going to add the name of the song. So let's set this font size to SF Pro. We're going to make this semi bold. Actually, we'll make it regular. And then we're going to change the size to 15 pixels, 20 pixel line height, 0% letter spacing. And then let's type the name of the song here. And then we're gonna change this text color to white. Let's actually make this medium and bring it in a little bit. I'm gonna bring in the letter spacing a little bit. I will center this within my bottom sheet here. And then I'm gonna add 16 pixels of spacing between the album artwork and the song title. Then I'm going to indicate how much time has transpired in the song. So let's have this say like one minute and seven seconds. And then let's make sure that this is wide enough that if the time was more, it would be able to fit within this container. We'll set that to 40 pixels. And then one last thing I need to do is add a pause button here. So I'm gonna type the word pause, but then I'm gonna to go to the font and type in font awesome pro. And then you can see I have a pause icon. Let's actually make that a circle like this. And then I'll change this to be 20 pixels wide, 20 pixels high. And then we will center this like so. And then we're gonna have eight pixels of spacing between these two things, but then only 16 pixels from the side here. And then let's stretch out this text box. So that again, there's only eight pixels of spacing. And now that I have that, if I take this timestamp, you can see it's eight pixels from the pause button and eight pixels from the text. Take all of this, we'll apply auto layout, and then I'm going to take all of this and put it in a frame. I'm going to call this bottom sheet. Let's actually remove that out, and then I'm going to create a component. Last thing I need to do with this component, I'll click on it. I am going to take this first rectangle, and let's have it left aligned, but we're actually going to have it scale. And then we're also going to have this scale, and then we'll do the same thing with this background here. We will keep this fixed to the left. And then let's actually remove auto layout here. We'll group these two things like this, group these two things like this. We'll have this align with the right, and we'll have this align with the left. And then you can see if I duplicate this and stretch it or condense it, everything scales properly. So I'm gonna test that out actually on a screen here. So let's take this, bring it up here, align it to the bottom, have it be fixed to the bottom, and then we'll have this scale horizontally. And then if I take this frame, you can see I can expand it. And so this would work for either mobile or tablet. Now that I've made my standard bottom sheet, I'm going to move on to a modal bottom sheet like this one here. So first thing that we're going to do is I'm gonna again make a frame, make this Android small. Then I'm gonna to go to my assets panel and I am going to go to my local components and I'm gonna grab 
grab a top app bar. I'm gonna paste this in here. We'll align that with the center and the top like so, but let's actually make this the smaller one. So we'll say regular, and then I am going to go down to my image lists. I'm going to go to my standard list here. I'm gonna remove an image from each of these columns. And then I'm gonna change the width of this so that there's eight pixels of padding on either side. And then let's change this to 360 minus eight minus eight. So now we've got that. And this is just so that we have a frame of reference here. I'm gonna actually lock both of these. So let's go back to the layers panel. Let's group this, we'll call this background. And this isn't part of the actual bottom sheet, it's just a reference point. So now I'm gonna add my scrim. So I'm gonna create a frame. Let's have this be zero pixels from the left, zero pixels from the top, and then we'll have this actually take up the whole size of this frame. So 360 by 640. Let's add a fill here, make it black. Let's set the opacity to 60%. And then I'm gonna make a simple row component. So the first thing I'm gonna do is type delete, and then I'm gonna change this to SF Pro, and then let's change the weight to regular. Well, I'll bring this in 2% and then I am going to change the color here to this gray and then I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to type the word trash. I'm again going to go to font awesome pro and then I'm going to change this to trash can. Change the spacing to four pixels and then I'm going to take this apply auto layout here and then we'll do 16 pixels of left and right and then we'll do 12 pixels top and bottom. Let's actually change this to 14 so it's 40 pixels high. We're going to have a white fill and then let's change this to be 360 pixels wide and then I am going to change this so I'm going to increase this icon size to 18 pixels and let's increase the height of this to 24 and then we'll change the width to 24 as well and then let's actually reduce this to that lighter gray and I'm going to take this and bump up the size a little bit to 16 pixels and then let's change this height to 24 pixels as well and then we'll change that to a lighter gray and then let's increase the spacing between these two things to 16 pixels and then i'm going to duplicate this three times and let's have this one say edit this one say duplicate this one say get link and then this last one will say delete i'm going to type the word link here i'm going to type the word copy here and i'll just type edit here and now i'll take all of these apply auto layout and let's take these and we're actually going to increase this so that it's 56 pixels high and then i'm going to take all of this and put it up here so now we've got our bottom sheet but we've also got this scrim which is that background overlay let's take this bottom sheet and we're actually going to put it within the scrim and then we'll rename this modal bottom sheet and then i'm going to duplicate this and then i'm going to turn this into a component like so and now you have a modal bottom sheet the last thing we'll create here is an expanding bottom sheet so here on the left you've got this little widget which is what you'd see on the bottom right hand part of the screen and then you've got this expanded state so we'll make both of these First off, I'm gonna create a frame. Again, this will be Android small. I'm gonna create that smaller component first. So let's create a frame here. We'll have this be 96 pixels wide and 56 pixels high. We will align this with the bottom right. We're gonna change this fill to that primary purple. And then I'm going to take this top left corner and let's add 24 pixels of rounding here. I'm gonna type the word image and then let's change this to be font awesome pro and we'll change this to be white and then let's make the size 40 pixels by 40 pixels just to start that still feels a little big so let's change this to be 20 pixels by 20 pixels that feels a lot better and then i'm going to duplicate this and i'm going to change this to sf pro and then i'm going to change the size here to 16 with 20 pixel line height and we'll just type three here to say they have let's say three images selected and then i'm going to set the width of this to be something more standard like 16 pixels and then I'll take both of these things and I'm actually going to change the width of this to be 24 pixels center that take both of these things and make them eight pixels away from each other and then let's change the spacing here to be 16 by 16 and then we should do that on each side so let's reduce the width of this to 80 pixels and then we'll reduce the height also to be 52 and then we'll take all of these move them to the bottom right and then let's reduce this rounding a little bit to just be 20. we'll frame all this and then let's call it bottom sheet collapsed and then we're going to take this and we're just going to create a component there now that we've made this bottom sheet that's been collapsed let's make the expanded version I'm going to go to my assets and I'm going to go to my top app bars. I'm going to grab this Android bar and we're going to put this in the top 
top center. And then I'm gonna grab this top bar. We're gonna change this to 360 pixels wide. And then we're gonna make the smaller version. And then we'll have these have zero pixels of spacing between each other. I'm actually gonna change this slightly. So let's take this copy and we're gonna change it to say, clear. Oh, uh, this is if someone was selecting a bunch of different photos. Well, this be 20 pixels from the right. We'll have this say three selected, and then we're going to change this to one of those down arrows. We'll have this say angle down, and then let's reduce the size of this. So we'll make this 15 and 20. Now that I have that, I'm going to make my selected image components. So first I'm going to make a rectangle that is 64 pixels by 64 pixels. And then I'm going to add a fill here, make it gray just so you can see it. But then let's go grab some images from Unsplash and I have these be of the desert. So let's grab one here. Let's change this size to be 56 pixels. And then I am going to duplicate this two times. All right, so now I've got my imagery. Let's change the spacing here to be 24 pixels. Let's add some headline text. I'm gonna change this to be a dark gray like this. We'll change this to say desert image one. And let's increase the width here. Move these over, have them be 16 pixels from the left. Move this over. Let's add some metadata here. So we'll reduce this size to be 14 pixels. And then we're gonna change this weight to be regular. Let's add some pixel information here. So we'll say this is 2000 by 1500 pixels. We're gonna reduce the line height of this a little bit so that it's only 20. Reduce the spacing here. And then we'll take both of these and have them be 16 pixels away from the image itself. And then the last thing we need to do is make it so that if you wanted to, you could remove this image. So I'm gonna say minus slash circle. And then I'm again I'm going to change this to font awesome pro. And then let's set the width of this to be 20. 20 pixels and then we'll center this. We'll have this be 16 pixels from the right like our image and then we'll vertically center this with the image. This icon is feeling a little small so I'm actually going to increase the size of this to 28 pixels and then I'm going to increase the size of the actual icon to 18 pixels and then again we'll make this 16 pixels from the right like this. Let's keep eight pixels of spacing between these two things so this will be 220 pixels wide. I'm going to take these two things, apply auto layout, again apply auto layout here and then apply auto layout here. Let's have this be 24 pixels from the header. I'm just going to duplicate these really fast and swap out the images, but we don't need to swap out all the metadata information. So let's say it does an image two, and then we'll have a third one here. Now that I've got all that, I'm gonna apply auto layout and then let's add a divider. So again, we'll take this. We'll have this be fill container. We'll set it to a lighter gray. We'll make it one pixel high. And then we're actually gonna reduce the gray intensity a little bit more. And then we'll change this text to be fill container as well. We'll have this say you have five downloads remaining this month. And then let's actually bring in the spacing a little bit here. So we'll change this to 16 pixels. And then the last thing we're gonna do here is add some buttons. So we've got three actions you can take. Let's make this 20 pixels from this component here. We'll have this say save to device. We'll have this one be tertiary and we'll have this say add to album. And then we'll have this final one, which we will have say share. Got an icon here, we're gonna change it to say save. And there you have it. So this is the full screen overlay that is triggered from this bottom sheet. So we'll have this say bottom sheet expanded and then let's create a component out of that. Now we have both the collapsed and expanded version here. And there you have it. You now have a standard bottom sheet, a modal bottom sheet, and a collapsed and expanded version of a bottom sheet. Each of these represents only one of a bunch of different ways that you can present information when creating bottom sheets. Bottom sheets can be used from anything for menus in a photo application, to a music player, to a list for a menu, to a mapping application. They're super versatile, but this should be enough to get you started. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of bottom sheets, how they work, and that you feel comfortable creating your own next time you're working on a new project. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.